Hi, Robin Beaumont here. We're talking quickly about how to find p-values from t, chi-square and f-values. We're going to look at how to do this in R Commander, SPSS and R. So we're going to start actually by just considering the t-value, but it will apply to the chi-square and f-values as we work through these examples. So with our t-statistic, we have a set of expected values of the t-statistic under a particular condition. And this is what the distribution looks like. So you can see that the most common value would be zero. We would expect our t-value to take. But how do these set of t-values relate to a p-value? Well, first thing to remember is that the p-value is a special type of probability. It's, it's not stands for p as probability. It stands for p-value, which is a particular type of probability. And what this particular type of probability is that it's talking about a range of values and we'll look at that more as we work through this example and also a p-value relates to a specific statistic in this instance it relates to a t-statistic and we can relate to other statistics such as um, a chi-square or an f-statistic but here we are just talking about the t-statistic And the t-statistic is quite interesting because it's actually a ratio. It's a ratio of observed values to those expected due to random sampling. And if there was no observed difference, it was all just a random sampling, then we'd get an expected value of zero. Um, and you can see that is actually what our t-value is. It's telling us what would be our expected t-values if the value was zero. i.e. if there was no difference. We say our most common expected value is zero. And because of that, it's, talk, it's actually a conditional probability. A p-value is a conditional probability. It's conditional upon the parameter value being zero. Right, traditionally, we used to use tables to tell us roughly where the statistic value lay in a range of p-values. So we'd look it up and say, all right, well, that t-value means that the p-value must be less than 0 0.005 or less than 0.1. But now we've got computers, we don't need to use that method, and we can actually find specific p-value, um, a t-value, or we can do it the other way around. For a particular t-value, we can find the specific p-value that associates itself with it. For example, say if we obtain a t-value of 0 0.087 with a degrees of freedom 19, because remember that the t-value shape, the PDF, changes dependent upon the degrees of freedom. So we have to specify the degrees of freedom to specify the shape of our t-distribution. So how does this relate to a p-value? Well, it relates to the area under the curve. And the arrow on the curve, as you can see, actually works both sides. So although we're talking about a t-value of 0.87, we're talking about t-values that are less than minus 0.87 and also greater than 0.87. So we're not talking about a particular p-value, probability value associated with a t-value. We're talking about a t-values, a set of t-values that are either less than 0.87 or greater than 0.87 and that is a blue area so what we're talking about is areas under this curve and how we would <coughs> interpret our p-value for a t-value of 0.87 is we'd say that it's the probability of obtaining a t-value of 0.87 or one more extreme given that the estimated parameter value is zero and when you say the estimated value is zero, often that's talked about in social science books as being the null hypothesis is true. But the null hypothesis is true just means it's that we're saying that the parameter value is equal to zero in this instance with a t value here. So the question is, how do we calculate this area under the curve for these two blue bits? Right. 
continuing with our example of a t value of 0.87 with degrees of freedom 19 we need to note that the blue shaded area on the left hand side is equal to the blue shaded area on the right hand side and so if we just multiply our lower value by 2 we find out what it was equal to so in R we just use a simple function called pt and we give it the lower t value notice minus 0.87 we give it what the degrees of freedom are then we multiply that value by 2 and we get our p value and if you actually carried out some type of t-test which we actually did in the notes and we got a p value with that degrees of freedom that's what comes out when we did a t-test you'll notice the pt function there in R stands for cumulative probability slash distribution function cumulative probability function or cumulative distribution function different books call it different things and as I say it takes the value of the statistic a t value and it returns the area under the curve which when we multiply by 2 becomes what we want our p value In SPSS we can do the same type of thing. In this SPSS we use a thing called the CDF and the dot after the dot tells us which distribution to use, T in this instance. Again we multiply it by 2 and there's our value exactly the same as in R. There are other ways of working out the p-value because what we did was take those two tails of our distribution. So instead of taking the two tails you could actually take all the value to the top tail that is t equals 0.87 and then we know the total area around the curve is equal to 1 so we can say 1 minus that top tail and then times that by 2 and we get the same value as we did before similarly we can take directly the bottom tail and the top tail of uh, our set of values and to do that in R it's quite simple. I've added this little bit of code you can see where it says lower tail equals true and lower tail equals false. What that's saying is take the area under the left hand side to our t value that we send the function or take the area to the right hand side of our t function and lower tail means we take the value up to the t value and when it's the lower tail we take the value on the other side down to the t value. The interesting thing is to note that default is always the lower tail. So if you don't put in lower tail equals true, or it assumes that it is. Question is do we consider when we're talking about a t value taking the top tail or bottom tail or both of them? And various reasons you always take what's known as a two-tailed approach to this you take a two-tailed p-value um, older books talk about possibly taking one-tailed tests but various research articles in the last 10 years have uh, discredited this approach right that was the, the t probability density function now let's look at the chi-square probability density function you notice it's a totally different shaped curve it doesn't go below the zero x-axis it's always positive and because of that reason it's only a one-tailed value we take and we always take the value on the right hand side that's because if we had um, a chi-square value of a degree of freedom of zero or one we find that it went out to infinity and we get some very strange results so as I said we take the area to the right and that's the important thing with the chi-square value we're taking one value and it's the area to the right so it's all always a one-tailed test in effect so in R again we use this P prefix so it's P chi-square let me put the chi-square value in say which degrees of freedom it is and we want the right hand side of the value so we say lower tail equals false and there's a p value associated with it remember that is not the default to take 
the right hand side of the value so we have to make sure we put that in in SPSSS again we use a CDF function but this time we use dot chisq and again we put in the same values because in SPSS cumulative density function which CDF stands for always works from the left hand side up until the value you need to say 1 minus that to get the right hand side remember because everything under the curve is always equal to 1 in a probability density function so we could actually go in the other direction we could go from a p-value to a statistic value if we wanted to and this functions in R and SPSS to allow us to do that so in R, we're talking about this thing called the quartile function. Don't worry about that. Just remember it works in the opposite direction to the other value we were talking about before. So this time we take a p-value into the function and out comes our t-value or a chi-square value. In SPSS, we have a similar function, which is IDF, which stands for inverse density function. And again... The dot t does it for the t value, and the dot chi-square does it for chi-square value. So, I'll just recap here. In R, if we take that chi-square distribution there, we've done three things, actually, to describe it. We've used p prefix in R, which gives us the area under the curve to the left or right, depending on how we specify it. Um, the q prefix gives us the statistic value the x value and I didn't mention it but there's also a d prefix you can add which gives you the y value called the probability density um, which is very useful if you want to draw a particular graph of a probability density function that's really the only time you'll see the, the d prefix used in SPSS we have a similar set of three functions we have the CDF which gives us area under the curve but it's always up to the left hand side of the value so sometimes you should use one minus to get the right hand area and then we've got the IDF which is the same as the Q prefix in R and finally we have the PDF prefix which gives us the same value as the D prefix in R let's get on with some actually practical examples now